and I think we are live. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, Feast for Odin solo playthrough as voted on by my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for joining me. There's a few people in the chat. Uh, yeah, thank you for joining me this afternoon. And hello to everybody who is watching the video afterwards. Um, yeah, so what is this about? Well, I'm doing a lot of solo playthroughs at the moment, but um, a lot of them are down to games that I want to play. And every month, my Patreon supporters have an input on the game that I'm going to do a solo playthrough, or one of the games that I'm going to do a solo playthrough of. And this month, Feast for Odin was chosen. Um, now, to be honest, I put the list up for my patrons to vote on, uh, and all of the games that I put on that list, I would be happily to play solo games of, but I still have a day job to do, so I can only take a certain amount of time off my paid work uh, in order to do these solo playthroughs, and today is Feast for Odin. So this is... Yes, a funny looking version of Heroes of Terranoth. That's definitely on the list to play. <laughs> definitely. Um, so yeah, Feast for Odin, one of my favourite games, possibly in my top 10 of all time, and I'm going to be playing it with the Norwegians expansion. Now, I last played this in February 2020, so it's been over a year since I played it. Um, I may be a bit rusty today, so anybody who knows how to play in the chat, please correct me if I get anything wrong. But we're just going to jump in and we're going to start playing. It's not going to be a tutorial. It's going to be just a playthrough, but if you don't know the game, I'll basically be telling you a little bit about what you do. Game's played over seven rounds, we're trying to score as many points as we can. That's how the solo game works. There's no other player that we're playing against, there's no Automa or anything like that. It's just nice and simple. Um, we are trying to get as many points as we can at over seven rounds, okay? The seven rounds are represented on my player board here. Uh, and in solo game, you actually have two different coloured meeples, work, worker meeples, because in the first round, I'm going to be placing blue. These are all of the different worker placement spaces that I can go on. And then at the end of round one, those blue workers will stay on the board. Therefore, I cannot use the same space on two consecutive turns. That's how that works. And yes, yeah, Scott says the way that the uh, solo works is, is very good. Have I still got another typo? I have another typo in the name of the game. Yeah, I can't spell Norwegians, obviously. Uh, I'll fix it there. It's Norwegians. There you go, fixed. Right, okay. Um, now, I have a house rule for this game, which I'm not using today, because I think that the tweaks that they made to the occupation cards in the Norwegians expansion, uh, the, the Norwegians expansion, um, kind of remove that. So I'm not going to be using my house rule today, which would be that there'd actually be an offer of occupation cards rather than you just getting them randomly from the top of the deck. It is still a little bit random, uh, and I know a lot of people play with the house rule for the, for the weapons as well, which I'm not going to be using today. But I'm keen to know um, if you do play with the house rule for the weapons, uh, then please let me know. Uh, Theodore is here. Yes, Theodore is a member of uh, a Facebook group that I'm on and said, uh, can't wait for Thursday. We'll need a reminder. So I literally just pinged you about five minutes ago. Right. So because I'm playing with the Norwegians, I have one of the, um, oh, what are they called? I knew I'd forget the name of them. Artisan Huts. Artisan sheds, artisan sheds. So the one I've got, the one I've been dealt at the start of the game has got the hermit's hut on one side. Oh, by the way, this isn't some disease that I'm getting. This is because I was painting my grove tender spires and the paint hasn't come off yet. I use my, I use my hands to soak up the paint when I'm dry brushing. So there you go, sorry for that. Um, anyway, the artisan shed that I've got, I've got the hermit's hut on one side and I've got the ice house on the other side. I, it's not mine yet. I have to build it uh, using this space here. Uh, but when I build it, I can build either side. So I'm not sure which one of them I'm going to go for. And the occupation, I say I'm not playing any house rules. Um, Radu says you have a display of three cards for both occupations and weapons. Yeah, that's what I usually do. Um, James is saying he's never played this as it seemed too long and heavy. It, the solo game is not long. I can play a solo game of this very quickly. It won't be quick today because I'm chatting with you guys. Um, but what I normally do is I normally choose three occupation cards at the start of the game for each player. Each player gets three and then they choose one. The official rules are you just get one at random, but I like players to have a bit of a choice. So I've gone with the angler today, but again, that is not in play to start with. That is just in my hand. I have to bring it into play. And yes, it looks more heavy than it is. Um, the core rules are actually relatively simple, but the rule book is huge. It is a huge rule book because it does cover all of the actions. Right. Let's jump in and let's see if we remember how to play. Now, I'm using this um, silk screen printed moose as the, uh, as the turn marker rather than a cube. And we start off in round one. You don't do the new Viking. You don't do 
What is it you don't do? Yeah, game ends after round seven. You don't do these three steps after round seven. So we do that. We get a new Viking. So in round one, I get a new Viking. I've now got six. Then we do the harvest. Um, so in round one, we get all of the orange items. So what you can't see is that there's a huge amount of other stuff um, off camera. Yeah, there's, there's a massive amount of stuff off camera. There's three of these trays, if you don't know the game, three of these filled with components. This is why it's an expensive game. Huge amount of components, three of these trays off camera. Two in the base game, uh, one for the expansion. So I get uh, some peas. I get every harvest good that has a one printed on it, which is some peas, some flax, and some green beans. I do love me green beans. Is that it? I think that's it. I think it's just three things at the start. Um, so yeah, so you get all of the harvest goods, that's that. Uh, turn exploration boards and play silver. We don't need to do that. We only do that from round three onwards. Uh, draw a new weapon. Right, here we go. So uh, yes, the set the setup and the takedown time. <laughs> um, again, this is what my patron uh, support uh, supporters allow me to do is I've basically taken a couple of hours off work today to do the stream, but I've taken another couple of hours to set everything up because this took me about an hour to set everything up with all of the cameras and everything else. Uh, anyway, we've drawn a spear. That's good because I kind of want to go fishing. Uh, and now we go into the core part of the game, which is the actions. So I've got six workers available. I can use any of these spaces here, but they're divided into five columns. Column one uses one worker. Column two uses two worker. Three uses three. Four uses four. Five is special. But you do get a bonus if you place it uh, in column three and in column four. And column five is new for the Norwegians expansion. But if you go in column five, you either place one or two workers, but that's your last workers that you can play in the round. You can't play any more after you've done that. And I don't know these actions that well. So I'm going to be playing probably a very inefficient game today. Uh, Kenneth's here. It's been a while since you've caught a live stream. Yep. Um, and Jolie's here as well. Um, I think you start with a mead. Yes, you do. You actually start the game with a mead. So it isn't part of the harvest, but you do actually start the game with one. Thank you. I forgot about that. Uh, Chaz is here in the chat. Thank you very much for joining in. I should drink mead while playing or setting up. No, we, we don't want to. We don't want to do that. We don't. That's a different channel. Pull, pull drinking while live. We definitely don't want to do that. Right. So because I've got the angler, that gives me a fish every time I succeed in laying a snare, which is this action here, which requires wood and snares. But I'm kind of thinking that I want to play the ice, the ice house and I want to play this as early as possible onto there and then that's going to unlock this. This is, I, I'm thinking, I don't really know, but I think this is what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go with the ice house because it fits together with the angler. And to build that, I need one wood and I need to go in that column. And I don't have any resources at the start of the game whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I think that's the first thing I'm going to do is collect myself some wood. So we have two mountain strips up here. Hopefully I will clear them off. And the various spaces for collecting uh, stuff from the mountain strips is here. So what do we want to do? Do we want to just nice and simple go there and collect two? Or do we want to go here and collect three? You see that, column three is draw a card. Column four is play a card. So the sooner I go into column four, the better because I can play a card. But do I really want to spend four workers right at the start? Probably not. No, so I, I think I'm just going to go nice and simple. I'm going to put one worker. I've got to also remember that any space I use this turn, I cannot use next turn. So I'm going to go there. We're going to go there and I'm going to get two resources. And I think that is off one mountain strip. I think two resources off one mountain strip. So I'm going to take that two wood. There you go. Done. First action has been taken. Uh, Genway says, yes, such a fantastic game to solo. In fact, I remember one afternoon, and this is a couple of years ago now, I, 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 I set this up and I just played it three or four times solo. And every time just cleared the board, set it up again, played again. It's so good. As I say, this is very likely, if you put a gun to my head and said, Paul, give us your top 10 games of all time, or we're going to pull the trigger, um, Feast for Odin would, would very likely be in there. Uh, it was my favourite game. 
joint favourite game, but probably, to be honest, my favourite game of 2016 when it came out. Anyway, we've done one action and I've been blabbering. Um, shall we just build the ice house straight away or do we want to go with the whaling ships? I kind of want to go down the whaling ship route because the whaling ship will get me uh, this whale blubber, which I can then put into the ice house. Yeah, I think that might be what we want to do because I need spears and wood for this. So, um, and there's a new thing with the Norwegians is the mini um, expeditions. Have I done top solo games? I haven't done top solo games and I don't feel comfortable doing that at the moment um, because although I am playing a lot of solo games at the moment, I'm not playing enough that I can come up with my top 10. I mean, to be honest, I could. I could probably go through now and give you my uh, top five most enjoyable solo games. I could do that, um, but it would change. It would, you know, next month it would change and then the month after it would probably change again. Uh, but this is definitely, this would definitely be in there. I can tell you that. Um, uh, so many different actions available. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had forgotten how many actions there were available. I mean, feeding people, I, I, I'm all right for feeding people. We're okay for that moment. There's two more types of animals in this version. Do we just go, oh, what's this? This is two weapons. Oh, I'm going to do that. Right. I'm going to use two workers and we're going to go on this action space here. So this is three things that you always take from the left of the strips uh, and I get two weapon cards as well. So I get three more wood. That's nice, right? And I get two weapons. I'm going to put these cards nearer me. So I'm having to reach across. I'll put them there. Two more weapons. What have we got? We've got a sword uh, and we've got a snare. Okay. So we've got lots of weapons. Um, right. We've got three workers left. Is there any point in building the... I mean, what I like to do at the start of the game is I like to get a little piece in here, a little, a little blue piece or green piece in here, um, because what that does is it gives me an early income. But how am I going to get that green piece? I'm going to have to upgrade orange to red and then red to green. So I'm going to have to do a double upgrade, which is here. I could well do that. Or is there any way, is there any way that I can actually get the green bit at the start? There isn't. <clears throat> oh, there's this. Aha. I could craft. I could turn one wood into a chest and a coin. Could do that. That's a good way of doing it. Top 10 solo games as voted on by patron supporters. That may be a future top 10. Yes, it would absolutely be. Um, possibly not the next one, which will be in May, but probably June or July. That's very likely to be the next one. After the next one. You know what I mean. Um, do I want to get that? I think I might. Because I do like doing that. So I'm going to spend two workers and we're going to go on this space here. So this is a crafting space. I spend one wood and I get a coin uh, or a silver and one of the two by two blue treasure chests. So I get a coin. There you go. Coin. And I get one of these and I am going to put that straight away in here. So if you don't know the game, uh, you're trying to fill this board here uh, as much as you can because all of these minus ones are negative points at the end of the game. So you're trying to cover as many of those as possible. But you're, all, you're also trying to get the income from the track. But there are rules in that you can only cover an income space if everything to the left of it or below it is locked, uh, is, is already covered. So basically, if you can see from my board here, here, I'm now going to get two income uh, in the income phase. Whereas if that wasn't there, I wouldn't get any income. So that's why I always like to cover that at the start of the game. Um, and yes, islands. There is islands as well. Now, where are the island spaces? The island spaces are no longer printed on this board. The, what the requirements for the island are now on this board here. And that was another thing that I was going to consider. Um, but I think we're just going to use the final one. Um, and we're going to place it on here. We are going to go there. We're going to spend one wood and we are going to build ourselves a small whaling ship, which is one of these, which goes here, like so. 
There you go. And that is all of my actions done. So we skip step six, which is determine start play. Income, so I get two money. My income track. Uh, animal breeding, I haven't got any animals. Now we do the feast. So I need to feed the people. Like a, a normal Uwe Rosenberg games, but I find the feeding rules in this game brilliant. I really like how they've done it. Um, and I think it's... Yeah, let's keep the flax. Let's put some green beans. You can't have two colours next to each other. Um, and you, can, you can't use the same piece more than once. If you do, it has to go vertically. Um, which is why the green beans are square, because the... the um, uh, yeah, they, 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 they liked eating the green beans. Um, oh, and an island from the fifth column. Island from the fifth column? Where's that? I'm missing that. Where's the island in the fifth column? Rules. Oh, that's this. Oh, yeah, in fact, no, the island spaces are here. Yeah, so taking an island with that cost one. An island, yeah, so the island spaces are here, but they're also printed on the actual tiles as well. Um, yeah, so this space here in the fifth column allows you to spend a coin and a wood to get a boating, uh, a whaling ship, and then, then get an island. Right, okay. Um, so bonus. If I have surrounded any bonuses, uh, yeah, I haven't. So I don't get any bonuses. Now we update the mountain strips. So we remove the leftmost resource from each mountain strip, uh, and then we get a new one. I'm going to have to slide this down a little bit. Aren't I? Yep, and we're going to populate that. So it's four wood, three stone, and an ore. Three stone, two stone. One of them, one of them. Pop that on there and four wood. There you go, and that's the end of round one. So normally in a multiplayer game you would now be removing the Vikings from the board, but in the solo game you don't. You leave them on there, and what happens is these in my waiting area, these are now mine, and round two, I get these two. So I've now got seven workers. And again, this is one of the things I like about the game. The whole increasing the size of your family in this game. Uh, is all done just naturally. You, ju you just get extra workers. They, they just arrive. You don't have to like go somewhere and, you know, reproduce or anything like that. Right. Okay. So harvest. Uh, I get everything with a one and a two. So I get some more peas. I get some more flax. I get some more uh, green beans. But this time I also get some wheat. I think that's the ones and the twos. Where's the threes and the fours? Over there. Right. Uh, we don't have to do anything with the islands just yet. I draw a new weapon. I've got another snare. And now we're doing actions. Okay, off we go. <clears throat> so, I would like these resources here, because these get better as we go near the end. But I definitely want those four things. And there is a four... So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend four of my lovely workers to go on this space. I get four resources from any one of the tracks. I take those. Okay, and because I've gone in column four, I can play a card. So I am playing the angler. Right, that now is in play. That's mine. And every time I succeed on laying a snare, I get a fish. So I probably should do that as my next action. Although, wow. Yeah, that's four of my things gone. Mm -hmm. What else did I want to do? Well, lots, but I think, I think I'm going to do that. So we're going to use two workers on here and we're going to lay a snare. <clears throat> now, when we're laying a snare, uh, this is going to be using the orange die. Uh, and I can use snares, of which I have three, and or wood. Uh, and every snare and wood I use... Uh, I think, does it reduce the die roll by one? This is the bit I can't remember. I knew some of the rules I, I, would, would just fall out of my fall out of my brain, but I think that's it. I think you're trying to roll and you subtract the things. You're probably telling me in the chat, but I'll, I'll just look it up because it's in the rules. Production spaces, exchange space, hunting spaces. Where's the hunting spaces? They are here. Production spaces. No. Hunting spaces. Trading. 
Migration, hunting, here we go. Yeah, hunting game. Um, so yeah, reduce the value of your roll by one for each thing that's printed on there. And you're trying to get to a zero. Yeah, you want to roll low. If your battle result is, yeah, okay. I think that's right, we're trying to roll low. Blue and yellow workers, yes, yeah, Swedish Vikings. <laughs> I'm glad somebody spotted that. Um, does anybody play the six round version? I've played it once. Um, I don't know whether I would play it again. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it was different. It, it was it was harder because you've got uh, you've got less time to do it in, so it isn't an easier game. I think it's actually a harder game. Um, Yeah, so you're trying to get zero, aren't you? I'm trying to find where it is in the rule book, but obviously doing a live stream. Oh, there we go. That's, that's what we're going to do. Um, and and if, if I'm wrong, please tell me in the chat. But I basically roll the dice, um, and I'm trying to get zero. So you, you're basically trying to roll equal to or lower than the number of things that you spend. Um, but when you spend them, they're gone. Now, I might as well spend the snares, because that's all they are useful for. Uh, yeah, if you've played the shorter game, your scores are going to be lower, but it, it is it is harder. Um, it's three rolls. It is three rolls. You get three chances of doing it. Right, I'm going to spend three snares. So that's basically a minus three. Um, do I want to spend a wood as well? Because I'm feeling unlucky. I think I probably do. So I'm going to spend a wood as well. Um, so there you go. So that's what I've spent. I've spent four things. I'm now going to roll the dice, I get three attempts, and I need to roll a four or less. And if I do, I have succeeded in laying a snare. Here we go. That is not telling me that I'm doing it wrong. Well, there's a six. And there's a four. So we did it on the second attempt. So I've succeeded in laying a snare, which means I get the four by two green, which is, whatever it is, it's this. It looks like some fox pelt or something or other. So I get that. And because I'm an angler, I also get fish. There we go. Nice piece of trout. Okay, there we go. Those are spent, but I get one of the snares back. The other, one, the others are spent. Uh, do you spend the resources after rolling? Ah, that's a good point, Andy. Yeah, I might be wrong. As I say, this is the bit that I'm a bit rusty. People are saying, ah, you spend resources to get it down to four. Thank you. So let's let's go back over this. Apologies for that. I got it wrong. You roll the dice first, and then you spend the resources. So I rolled a six. I wasn't going to keep that. I rolled a four. It actually worked out the same. I'm going to keep the four and then I spend the resources to get it down to zero. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you roll the dice up to three times, get as low as you can and then pay that number. Right, we got it right. Thank you very much. As I say, not played for over a year and I knew some bits would be rusty, but we got there in the end. We've done it. We found that. We found that. We found a fish. This is awesome because this can go on my board, although it's a bit too big. Oh, if we just have a look at my board now, I don't, I don't like covering up these because these are, this is free stuff. I don't like covering up free stuff. So I don't want to put it there because that covers that up. I don't want to put it there because that covers that up. I don't want to put it there because that covers that. I can. I am allowed to do that. What I can't do is I can't put it here because I can't cover up that until everything to the left or below it has gone. So I'm actually going to keep that just for now. Yeah, I'm going to keep that just for now. Okay, I've got one worker left, and what do we want to do? What do we want to do indeed? Um, yeah, I kind of wanted those, but I can't get those with one. Hmm, okay. I think I'm going to eat that trout. Let's just, let's just plan my, my eating. Yeah, I think that's going to be my eating. Okay, that's what we're going to do as far as food goes. Um, so I'm all right for that. Am I able to put anything else on the board? Do I want to go and get an island? I do always like to get at least one island, so I think I might. Oh, actually, yes, because then I can put that on there. Right, now what's available at the moment is... 
Um, I think I can get either the Isle of Man or the Isle of Sky. Because they need one worker and I can get it with a whaling boat. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and get myself an island. I'm going to use that space there. Which one do we want? Now I'm just looking at those boards and I'm thinking if I was to get the Isle of Man, I'm going to get a free mead every turn. Hmm. What do we think, chat? Oh, I forgot to take the upgrade action from the first round. Did I? Oh, you're right. I've got a double upgrade that I was missing. Thank you. So I'll convert that into... That. That changes things quite a bit. Or does it? Actually, yes, it does. Does it? Hmm. Not sure, actually. Um, okay, so anyway, back to... Yeah, the starting islands are different. Um, and what you can actually do is you can actually... Uh, I'm just using the four from the Norwegians expansion. You can mix the original ones in if you want to. <clears throat> it says you're supposed to mix them in with three or four players, but if you want to mix them in, you can. Uh, have I done anything to the chat? Says Frodo. No, I haven't. It's normal low latency setting. Um, so it should be about eight to ten seconds delay. Um, and yes, you can use coins and you can use ore to cover these, these little spaces here. Um, so I'm, I'm deciding whether to take Isle of Man or the Isle of Sky. I think I'm going to take the Isle of Sky because it's a good board game by Alexander Pfister. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm literally using that to decide which one to take. So there we go. I've taken Isle of Sky. Uh, that was with this action and that was with this boat. And I now have the Isle of Sky. OK, so before we move on, let's start putting stuff on my boards and see. So is this one going to fit? Yeah, if I just move this one over a bit. There you go. Right. OK, we're going to move this one. So we've already sorted the feeding out. Um, I've got this that I can place. I've got this that I can place. I've got two ore if I really want to place the ore. And I've got this money. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this fox pelt. I think it's a fox pelt. And because I have a thing about calling things the right name, I am just going to look it up. Is it in the appendix? No, it's not in the appendix. Somebody let me know what this is. Is it, is it a fox pelt? Yeah, it looks like a fox. I think I'm going to put that there. Okay, so that means straight away I'm going to get one income from the Isle of Sky. Do I want to do anything here? Because I don't think I'm going to be able to increase my income to three. Um... Oh, is this, is this available digitally anywhere? Oh God, if it was, I, I'd never get any work done. <laughs> there is probably a version on Tabletop Simulator, yes. Um, but no, I don't think there's a digital version of this game. But yeah, if there was, I would be all over it. Now I could... Oh no, I can't cover that one up unless I cover... Oh yeah. And you can't put green next to green. Um, so I think I might be done with that. Ah, uh, do I want to do anything here? I don't think I do. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that mead. I mean, I could, but I think I'm going to wait. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait. Right, so income. I get one from the Isle of Sky and I get two from my home island. I get three income. Animal breeding, no. Feast, we're all right. We're going to eat that. Bonus. No bonuses. Update mountain strips. So this mountain strip can go because it's empty. Uh, that goes and that goes. These slide down. And now we get a new one. What have we got? We have. Need to zoom out, don't I? Two wood. Three stone. Have a lovely ore. 
and we have too many on the end. Right, okay, so we're mounting strips, and now we remove the blue Vikings that were placed in round one. And I get two more. Okay, off we go to round three. Harvest. There is no harvest in round three, okay? Uh, but we do flip over the A board. So the Isle of Man, we now can't have the Isle of Man. That gets flipped over. And we put two coins on each of the other islands, making them more incentivized, more, more attractive. Uh, draw a new weapon. It's a sword. I don't think I want a sword, really. And now we get to do actions. Right, this time I've got seven. I don't have any other occupation cards. But what is the plan now? Do we even have a plan? I think, no, we don't have a plan. Um, I, I can't lay a snare again, because that, that's covered over. I don't really want another island just yet. I tell you what, I want this. So I am sending one worker definitely there to get these two, the last bits, because the last ones are always really valuable. So that's that mountain strip gone. Okay, next. Do we want to build the ice house? Do we want to go a whaling? I think I want to build another ship first. So we're going to build another with a wood. We're going to build another whaling ship. I'm going to get me three whaling ships going before I then start going whaling. Um, now, harvest. How are we doing for the harvest? Yes, get more small boats fast. That's what I'm doing. Um, now, what can you eat at the table? You can't eat. Can you eat silver at the table? Yes, you can. So, I, I, so there is the harvest. That's fine. Instead of eating, I just give them a bit of money and say, you don't need to eat. You'll, you'll be fine. We need to start covering these boards up. That's what we need to be doing. Do we want to go bother with the animal breeding? I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a hundred different things to do in this game and you won't do everything. We've not even covered the animals. We've not even covered these or this. Yeah, there's a huge amount of stuff. Where is the crafting? It's that one. I love that space. Because that is one ore for any one of uh, the goods that can be forged. Now, why in Norwegians do you get the board, a forge board with everything that's a sword value nine? What's the difference between that and that? I don't really know the difference. Because in the original game, you could actually forge anything that had the tongs symbol on it. Um, it's a supply board for the small special tiles with the forged tongs symbol. Place all special tiles with the forged tongs symbol and a sword value of 8 or lower on the supply board. Yeah, there is now an additional action space which can be used to acquire these tiles. Ah, there. Right, okay. So this one will allow you to acquire anything, whereas this one will only allow you to acquire anything that's on that board. So for one ore, I could basically acquire something huge like this. Um, Eric is here. He said he just picked up Feast for Odin a few hours ago. There you go. Perfect. Uh, John's here as well, and apparently there is a scripted TTS mod. Nice. Nice. Okay. So, I think... Oh, do we want to do that? I mean, it is so good. For one ore, you can basically get a huge thing on your board taking up loads of space. Like, I can go there. What, as long as I cover these spaces up, which I can, that is pretty awesome. Can you turn it over? Oh, I can turn it over. That's even better. We've got to do that, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, is that the biggest piece? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven spaces. How big's this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so the, the anvil, I think, is the biggest thing that you can forge. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend three workers. We're going to go here. Because I've placed in column three, I get to draw an occupation card. This is the bit I don't like, because this is just a random draw. And it might be good. It might not be good. It's the Armed Fighter. Now, first of all, I need to check because a lot of the cards have... Um, it calls it a ratter, but it's basically slight tweaks to them if you're playing with Norwegians. That card is not on there, so that's good. 
Armed Fighter says, if I use a fourth space in the action column before taking the action, I get one uh, either stone or ore from a mountain strip. Okay, but it's also three points. Three points if I play it. Right, so now I'm going to spend one ore and I'm going to craft the anvil and we're going to turn the anvil over and we're going to put it like that. Now I'm only allowed to do that if I also cover these two spaces here, which I'm going to do with this. There you go, right. Oof. Right, next. I love this game. It is so, so good. I tell you what, shall I just um, play this for the rest of the day? We'll just do a live stream of me playing Feast for Odin multiple times. I'd love that. Right. Are we going to build... Do we want to go Wailing now? Or do we want to wait? Because Wailing is a D12. That's the problem with Wailing. It's a D12 and you still need to get... Uh, Less than zero. And it's going to cost three workers. It would cost all of my workers. But look at the benefits of whaling. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. We've got a stone. And we've got all of these things to build as well. There's more stuff in the game. Um, there's so many things, isn't there? I mean, do we want to do it? So there's this fifth column. The, surely the fifth column is actually a really good column. But you can only do it with your last worker. So maybe maybe we should be doing that. Maybe we should be using the fifth column to get those extra bonuses. Because they do look nice. I'm now looking at them and I'm thinking, oh, hello. These are rather nice. Yeah, so I think we need to use the fifth column. Um, hmm. Do we want any other boats? We do. What about hunting game? Do we want that? No, I need to save the wood. I don't need, I've got these swords and I don't really need these swords. I guess I could go raiding. But we got no resources. Wow. Nothing at all. Yeah, I'm not sure about going down the animal route. I'm really not. Um, and I've just noticed something, so I'm definitely going to do that as my last action. So what am I going to do as my first action? Okay, I think I've decided I am going to spend one of my workers on there. I am going to spend one wood and I'm going to build a shed. Now, when you build a shed, you can actually build either one of those sheds or you can build your own one. So I'm going to build this one. This is now mine, and I think I am going to go with... I am going to go with the ice house. Okay, so there you go. My artisan shed has been built. Um, does anybody ever use the four or ten coin pieces? Rarely, rarely, but I do. And if you're going to go animals, you need to go animals early. Yes. Uh, Graham said he'd be thinking about building boats to reduce those food costs. Yeah, I thought about the, uh, the emigration route. Renee's here as well. Hi, Renee. Thank you for joining in. Uh, right, I've now got these two and I'm going to go here. I'm going to use this fifth space here, uh, the fifth column. And if you use two workers, you get to play an occupation card. So I am now an unarmed fighter as well as an angler. There you go. Don't mess with me. I got a fishing rod and I know what to do with it. So I get one coin. Um, one of these, it's a new tile. Whatever it is, I'm going to look it up. See what it's called? It's called Herbs. There you go. It's a bit boring. Uh, and also I get some mead. Okay, that is it. That is the end of the action phase. Income. So before income... Oh, I had a plan. I was going to put that there. You can't put orange on the board. Ah. Do I want to do anything? Do I want to put any of these things on the board? Do I want to change what I'm using for the feast? I don't think I do. Do I want to cover anything else up? No. I mean, I've got all this money. But. No, I don't think I'm going to cover anything else up at this stage. So we're good. Income is now one for that and three for this. 
I get four income. There you go. I'm going to take one of the four four income, four silver pieces. Um, Michael's going to try the animal route next time I play. Yeah, I think I will as well, Michael. Next time I play this, I'm going to go heavy into the animals as early as possible because the pigs now breed a lot quicker um, than the original animals. Beast. Nom, 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 nom. Apart from the guy who I gave silver. Bonus. Now I do get a bonus. Now I get a mead. So that is the only bonus that I'm getting. And then we update the mountain strips. So that goes and that goes. And we get a new one. Which one's this? This is... Two wood. One stone. Two ore. And look at that lovely silver at the end. Oh, now that is a nice strip. I do like that. Okay. Remove the yellow ones from the board. Those come back. And the next round. Harvest. We do get a harvest. We get everything labelled one, two, or three. So that is some peas, some flax, some green beans, some wheat, and everybody's favourite, cabbage. What board games have cabbages in? Apart from this and this. Do I need to cover the spots below the anvil? So no, if, let's just have a look closely. Um, so you are, the rules are you are only allowed to cover a money icon if everything to the left and below it is covered. So if you can see here, the anvil is actually going there. So, I, so that, um, that's, uh, that's okay. But because there's no money icon here, that's allowed. Okay, it's only the money icons that have that rule. So, uh, yeah, we've done the harvest. We are flipping over the bee island, which is, no, oh, it's already here. So we don't flip that over and we put two money on each of the other ones. Right, so we have Limerick, Outer Hebrides and Islay. Off we go, drawing a new weapon. Randomness, it's a bow. Need, need a snare. Right, actions. So, what are we going to do? We can't build another whaling vessel yet. We're going to do that next turn. We can lay a snare again, but I don't have any wood. And I only have one snare. So I need to get some wood in order to lay a snare, which will then allow me to get another fish. Okay, so that's that plan. Uh, now, there is the mini emigration here, which reduces the food costs because em emigration puts tiles on here. I do want to do some upgrading as well. But which upgrading do we want to do? That is the question. Ah. Do we want to go crafting again? I can't go crafting because the blue player went crafting, so I can't do that. There's some other crafting spaces that are actually quite nice. Yeah, there's, you are just faced with so many choices. It can be overwhelming. Hmm. Do we want another island? Do we want to explore Limerick, the Outer Hebrides, or the Isle of Islay? In fact, I could only explore Limerick with what I've got. I think I might take Islay later on. Hmm. Right. We need to do some upgrading. Because I want to put that there. Once I flip it over. So I'm going to need to double upgrade that. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to put three workers in this column here which gets me to draw an occupation card. More randomness. It is the Knarr Builder. It means that whenever I place a worker on that space, instead of taking that action, I can spend three wood to build a Knarr as well, instead. Okay, but now I take three resources from a mountain strip and a double upgrade. So the double upgrade is gonna be these herbs. Oh, it's actually more efficient to do this. <gasps> Am I going to be inefficient? Oh, in fact, I can't. Even if I do that to green, I can't put it in there. Oh, Paul. You and always need to be as efficient as possible. While I'm thinking, I'm going to take my three resources. And I'm going to take... I'm trying to think ahead. 
for what's going to be coming out. I'm going to take those three. Yeah, so we get one wood and two stone. Right, double upgrade. The double upgrading the, the, the cabbage is, it's an extra space. But I'm also looking at this funny shaped Isle of Sky here. I mean, who designed this island? Barty Bartfast. We've got some more things we want to cover over there. There's a runestone there. Oh, if I can cover that up. That would be nice. And I can also be covering these up. I didn't think about this, but I could have been covering these up. Ah, yes, I should have been doing this. I was focusing on the left-hand side of the board, and I didn't need to. I could have been doing all of the stuff around here. So, yeah, I'm going to do a double upgrade of the cabbage. So the cabbage upgrades into that, which then upgrades into that. Okay, we're done. Next action. Oh, it's Islay. Right, okay. Not Islay. Islay. I thought so. I said, uh, said Islay. I don't know why I said Islay. I need to do some more upgrading. I absolutely need to do some more upgrading. Do we really want to do that? Oh, because if I do that, I do that, and I do that. Oh, that's good. Oh, but then I can't do that. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I need to be using my armed fighter, if possible. Oh, we were going to lay a snare, weren't we? But I need more wood for that. I've only got one. One's a bit rubbish. How do we get more? Uh, get more here. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go here. I'm going to take this wood. And I'm going to do one upgrade, and it's going to be to upgrade these herbs into... It's a pig. It's an, it's, this is an actual pig. So I've got an animal. Oh, that's interesting. No, no, no. Red goes into orange. Have I got my colours wrong? Which is the bottom one? It's orange first. So orange goes into red. Yeah. Orange goes into red. So the herbs upgrade into a pig. So I actually have a pig. Now pigs will breed every round. Okay. Well, that's different. Maybe I'll keep that then. I was not expecting that. Yes. Right, I think... I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to go four. I'm going to go big. Four into this column here. So all sorts of things happen now because my armed fighter, whenever I use the fourth column in action space before taking the action, I get a stone or an ore from one of the mountain strips. I take the stone. Then, because I've used the fourth column, I get to play a card. So I'm playing the Kanar Builder. Because these are all good points. Uh, and also, with this expansion, any time you don't... Any time you get the opportunity to play a card, you can just discard it and take a victory point marker instead. So if you did draw a rubbish card, um, that you can just discard it and take... It starts off at four and then it goes down. But that's fine. I'm just going to play it for three points. And now I get to do the action. So I take four things. One, two, three, four. So that's that mountain strip gone. And I get to do two double upgrades. Two double upgrades. So I am going to upgrade. I'm going to keep those pigs. I'm going to upgrade the wheat into that. And then... that okay and then i'm also going to upgrade the green beans into milk and then wool so there's my two double upgrades right okay so yes michael house rules the occupation cards and creates an offer of two yeah i i do the same a lot of people do i've decided today not to use that rule but next time i play i'm definitely going to have an offer of either two or three occupations i just don't with a deck that size, I just don't like drawing randomly. 
Right, I've got one action left and I'm tempted to use the last column because the last column is awesome and super efficient. Oh, I could craft something. I've got some ore. Let's do it. Let's spend an ore and let's craft and it's got to be something from this board here. And at this point, we could do all kinds of shenanigans. Yeah, we could be doing something like that. It's quite good, isn't it? That's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's probably the biggest one. We'll put the sickle in there. Right, that is my actions done. So before income, I'm going to start putting some stuff on my boards because I can do that now. And we can start covering things over and getting some nice juicy bonuses. Right, what are we going to put where? What can we do to get some more bonuses? Uh, can we do this? I'll tell you what, we might be able to do this. If I put this here, oh, I don't think, mm, are we going to be able to? I mean, I could just cover it over with coins because it, I think it's going to pay for itself. And you can use ore as well, but I'm going to save the ore because I'm doing some crafting. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put that there, which means I have to put that there and that there. Right, so that is getting me, just zoom in, show you my board. There you go. That is going to get me an income of four. So I am allowed to cover that space because everything to the left of it and below it has been covered. Now, I was also going to try and cover some more spaces down here to get some more bonuses. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's going to go there and I'm going to put that there. So that's that covered as well. So that's going to get me a flax every um, bonus phase. Is it worth spending more coins to get the fish covered? Or not yet? Hmm. I think we're good. Now, is there anything else I want to cover on here? I don't think there is for the moment. I think I'm good with that. I do need to sort out my feeding, which I haven't done yet. So let's sort the feeding out now. Let's put the flax there, the mead there. Ah, now if you eat to, if you eat peas consecutively twice, the second one will have to be turned vertically. So I think, yeah, unless you can't use all, you can't eat all, believe it or not. And trade in a two coins for two ones. I think we're going to have to do this, and we're going to have to do that. It's a little bit inefficient, but I think that's probably my best plan. Why not use the bedroll instead of the four coins? That's a very good point. Thank you. Forgot about the bedroll. Yep. Excellent. Oh, and then I'm going to use one coin in there, which means I'm going to get a bedroll back. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Brilliant. Right. Animal breeding. Oh, have I done my income? I haven't done my income. I get four. I get seven money. Nice. So one, two, three, seven. Uh, animal breeding. So pigs breed every round. Now, two pigs. Feast. There's the feast. The feast is done. Monique is here. Hi, Monique. Thank you for joining in. Uh, bonus. Right. So all sorts of bonuses now. Um, I get a rune stone. Like a rune stone cow. No, that's the different thing. Um, I get a bedroll or cloth or whatever it is, uh, and I get some mead from here. Right, so that is that is all of the bonuses. Update the mountain strips. So the ore goes, the wood goes, this comes down, we get a new one, we populate it, three wood, one, two, three, couple of stone, or and another double silver. Right. Okay. 
We move the place to Vikings. So it is blue now comes back. Is it time to go a whaling? I think it might be. Harvest. We have no harvest in round five. Okay. So this is the round where we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. And we flip over the seaboard. So we didn't get any money. Uh, we didn't get the Outer Hebrides. That changes into cork. Okay. I get a flax too. Yeah, where's the flax? There, thank you. Thought there was a flax. Ah, so that's going to help the feasting situation a bit better. Let's draw the new weapon, see what we get. It's a snare. That's good. Okay. Actions. So let's work out what I'm doing for food because I'm a bit short on food because there was no harvest in round five. Okay, so I probably need to just go to the weekly market and get some stuff. Yeah, I'll get some green beans from the weekly market. But, hmm, there's a double silver there right at the end. Might have to miss that. Right, how are we doing for laying a snare? I think we're okay. I think we're okay for laying a snare because of three wood and two snares. So yeah, we're, we're good for laying a snare. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use two workers to go here. We're going to lay a snare. First roll is... Oh, an emigration. Yes, I always forget the emigration. Except when I'm doing an emigration strategy. First roll is an eight. I'm going to roll again. Second roll is a six. I'm going to roll again. In fact, I can't do it on a six. It's a one. Yes. So I spend a snare. I get a snare back. Um, I get a fox pelt. And I also get um, fish because I'm an angler. There you go. Now, that has definitely sorted out most of the food situation. Yeah. Okay, right. So what we're going to do next? Uh, we are going to go on here. We're going to spend one of those wood to get another whaling ship. So I've got three of them now. Now I can put an extra ore on these because at the moment I'm minus three, but I can also use spears and wood. So I'm at minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. I'm at minus seven if I was to do it. Do I want to get any more wood before I do that just in case? I mean, I've got all of this stone. What am I doing with the stone? Anybody know what stone is for? <laughs> Crafting things, yeah. I don't know what else the stone is for. I seem to have a lot of it. Oh, it's for building these other buildings. Right, okay, yeah. Oh, gosh. Did I find a way to fit all of this into the base box? No, not in any way whatsoever. <laughs> And Joel is disappointed because nobody picked up on his islands in the stream joke. I picked up on it, Joel. Don't worry. Uh, right. Okay. This is the round where I need to do lots of clever things. So I think I'm going to play it safe. And I'm going to go on here. And I'm going to get two wood. Okay. Now, do I want to use that or on the whaling ship or not? Do I want to save the ore for crafting? I think I want to save the ore for crafting. Yeah, I think so. Oh, look at that. Get meat from pigs. Okay, we're going to do it. We're going to place three workers in this column here and we're going to go whaling. So because I've placed three workers in column three, I get an occupation card, and it is a merchant, which might be one that I just discard for, for four points. Um, and off we go. We're going whaling with the blue dice. So three rolls. Let's see what we get. First roll is a one. I'll take that, and I will spend a spear. There you go. Spear has been spent. Uh, putting ore on the whaling ship. No, in fact, I don't need to because I'm at minus three. So each whaling ship, um, if you put an ore on it, that's another permanent minus one. So actually, I'm at minus three because I've got three whaling ships because there's an ore pre-printed on there. So yeah, I don't need to spend a spear. 
um, it's successful. I get some whale oil, I get some skin and bones, and I get the, 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 the blubber thing. There you go. Right, nice. Okay, which means what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go here, I'm going to spend one wood. Oh no, I've already built my thing. <laughs> I've forgotten, I've already built my ice house. So that goes there. And then if I just cover that with a two-piece something or other. Oh, you can also put orange in here. Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, wow, that's really good. Yeah, that is really good. Um, if I had any. <laughs> I don't have any. I just need some peas. Anybody got any peas? Right, so that's that done. I've got two workers left. I would like to use the last column because the last column is amazing. Um, am I going to go whaling again in the game? I'm not sure I am. So I might do this little emigration. Or do we do a big emigration? Or do we go for another island? I don't think I go for another island. I mean, look at this. I'm, I'm really not doing well here. So I don't think we go for another island. Um, I could do that, but I too, do I do that? Hmm. Interesting. Which of these last columns do I want to do? Do I want to do this? Uh, no. We don't have any trading vessels, so we can't use that. I could do the little immigration uh, and play a card. Oh, it's, it's just this one, isn't it? Yeah, and it turns a whaling ship into, into a little mini immigration, which is worth seven points. Hmm, I'm tempted. The other thing that I always forget to do is you can buy the boats. You can buy the boats for coins, and I have loads of coins. Because it cost you eight coins, but it's worth eight points at the end of the game. So you're not actually losing anything from it. Um, so I could do that. Where's the other emigration action? It's there. I'd be paying five coins for that. Is this round five? I don't know now. I really don't know. I've got these two swords, but I don't have... I could do... got theft. What's the difference between theft and pillaging? That's actually quite good. I might do this. I'm going to do this. The new space. I've not used it before. Where's the expansion rules gone? <laughs> so many rule books for this game. Four rule books. So, theft. To use the theft action space, you must have a canal. As with pillaging, you can take a tile whose sword value is equal to or lower than your roll. You can increase the roll using your depicted weapons. You cannot use stone. If the theft is unsuccessful, you gain one each of the depicted weapons. Okay. So yeah, it's just like pillaging. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's spend uh, five of our hard-earned money to buy a canar. And then I'm going to use these two. Do we use two or do we just use one? Uh, I've still got the food situation to sort out, haven't I? might just use one. I'm going to go here with one worker to get some green beans. Okay, and a coin. And then I'm going to use the other worker in column four on the theft space. Okay, right. So, here we go. We get three rolls. And I can spend swords, bows, and spears to make this better. And we're basically looking at anything with a sword value on. Okay, off we go. First roll is a seven. I'm going to keep that. Um, so what can I have for a seven? Well, there's lots of things that I can have for a seven. But I have bows and swords that I'm not doing anything with. And in fact... Okay, so that's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What can I buy for eleven? 
Look at that. There's some really good stuff there. Yeah, there's that big axe for 11. I do like that. Or we could go to 12 and have the big grail. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. What do we want to steal? Because that would go very nice in there. And then we can cover up all sorts of other things. Right, before I decide what I'm going to steal, because this is the last action I'm doing, I'm going to put some other stuff on my board and do some shenanigans. Um, I don't know what shenanigans we're doing, but we are definitely doing some shenanigans. Am I really bothered about this stone? I don't think I am. Really not bothered about that at all. We want to cover up as much as possible on this, try and get our income up, and to cover up some of these minus one spaces. And I need to cover up some of the spaces on this board as well. Um, poof, right. Don't want to cover that up. I think I can put that there. Yeah, I like that. That's good. I could just end up covering all of this up with um, with coins. So yeah, I'm going to cover up the stone. Normally don't like doing that, but I'm not really using the stone. Um, then I'm going to cover that, put that there, like so. And then I haven't decided which one of those I want. If I was to take this, that would that would change everything. I'm going to get into a circular argument, a circular discussion here, aren't I? I'm just going to take this. I'm going to take this. This is what we're going to take, uh, and we're going to we're going to try and put it on our board somewhere. And I've got these as well, and this, and this. Okay. So if you want to take a break for five minutes and come back and see me still wrangling with this, because I may be a while. How best to do this. And I know I can't put that there just yet, but I, I don't worry. I'm going to cover it over. I have a plan. Go there. That's nice. And that can go there. Okay. And then we're going to fill these with coins. Now I know coins are money. <laughs> then coins are points at the end of the game. But I am going to be spending them. I just love how fiddly this game is. I need to split another one. I need to split another one. There we go. Not enough. I need to put another one there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That's surrounded, that's surrounded, that's surrounded, and I'm getting myself six income. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, right. Whew. Things on your ice house. Oh, yeah. Shall I just do that now? I think I will. I'll just put that there. Thank you. So, income is four for the Isle of Sky, one for my ice house is five, plus six from my main board is 11. There you go, I'm going to take the 10. <laughs> I will no doubt have to split that in a minute. Right, animal breeding. I get another pig. Oink. That was my pig impression. Just in case you didn't know. Feast. That's all of this. And then bonus. Here we go. Right, so I get... Some whale oil. I get some flax. I get a rune stone. I get some cloth. I get some mead. I get an ore. I get some wood. 
I get another rune stone. That is it. That's my bonuses. Update mountain strips. So that goes with the coins that were on it. The wood goes. We get this one. And we need two wood. Coins. Two ore. And stone. Need my secondary storage. Booster. Okay, right, that's the mountain strips done. Remove the placed Viking, so it's the yellow ones that are now coming back. And off we go for round six. We have a harvest, we have everything this time. So we have some peas, we have some flax, we have some green beans, we have some wheat, we have some lettuce, not lettuce, cabbage, and finally, we have a big bowl of fruit. There you go. Why not move the axe one space to the right and shift the bedroll down? Okay, let me have a look. Shift the bedroll down to there. Okay, and if I still want the ore, I still have to do that, but that has saved me two coins. Okay, there we go, thank you, awesome. Whew. Yeah, because that, that I, you have to cover something on the diagonals in order to completely surround it. So yeah, but that saved two coins, so that's good, thank you. Right then, off we go. Um, we are flipping over the D board, so I lay, we didn't go for that, uh, and then there's two on Cork and there's two on Limerick. So Limerick, the six on Limerick. I'm tempted not to bother with the other islands, just because I think I need to focus on this now. And I've still got plenty of minuses on there that I need to get, and I've still got this that I need to get. So, um, drawing a new weapon, we have a sword, and now we are in the actions. Right, okay, so, can't go whaling. We can't lay a snare. I've got these pigs. I probably want to do something with these pigs. Either at this stage or maybe next stage. Uh, now there is a space here that gets meat from pigs, but I also want to do some upgrades. And we have some really, really nice stuff here. So I think I'm going to put four workers in this column. Okay. And because of my armed fighter, I get to take a stone. Then I'm going to take all of this, which is very nice. Okay. Uh, and then I get to draw, oh, no, I get to play a card, but I'm not going to play a card. I'm actually just going to discard the merchant and take a four point token. This is the new rules for occupations in, uh, in the Norwegians. Still need to cover the coin to the bottom left of the axe. Oh, yes, I do. Thank you. So it only saved me one money. <laughs> There you go. But it's still one money. Right, so that's that done. Oh, I do, I do a double upgrade. So we are going to double upgrade this bowl of fruit uh, into some whale meat and then into a nice robe, which can go onto this board here, which is effectively going to get me nine points. Right. All I want to do now is get stuff to cover the spaces and I need to get myself a fish ready for uh, next time. It's just what's the best way of doing it now. I mean, look at all of this ore I've got. I need to be crafting. What we need to do, so we're going to spend three workers here to go crafting. I draw an occupation card and I have drawn a private chef. Now that is yellow. That means as a one-off, I can spend four silver to do all of that stuff, I think. Let's just check that card, 67. No, no changes for card 67. Uh, is it in the almanac to the game? No, the almanac is all of the historical stuff. Uh, 67. Yeah, when you play this card, you may immediately once pay two, uh, buy two, yeah, oh, 
I think I'm going to do that. I think I actually quite like that card. I do. Now, I'm going to spend it all. And we're going to have uh, any crafting item I want to. So what's the next biggest one? There's this. I don't know what this is. Anybody knows what this is? Let me know. Pigs can be upgraded. Yes, pigs can be upgraded. Um, I don't know what this is. But I think this is what I'm going to build. And it's going to go... Oh. Let's look at some tetris -y shenanigans. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the biggest one for the points. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine. Ah, it's the same size as this. This is also nine. This is a bit easier to place. So I don't know what you're called, so you're going away. Uh, and we're going to have this. And this is just going to go... Boom in there. Yep, I like that. That's going to go there. And then I'm going to put this in there like that. I like that. Okay, so that's that space done. Next is... So we want to play the private chef. I've got four left. I kind of want to, I want to keep the last column again because the last column is really good. Um, so I only want to spend a maximum of three. Are we looking at potentially emigrating? The emigrating is going to cost me a lot of money, but it is going to save my food costs and it is going to get me some points. Are we even... Oh, that's four. That's column four. Column three. Ah, so you can buy the things for money. I could do that. That's actually quite good. I do have lots of money. I do have a trading ship. You can basically buy any two items from the board for their coin cost. James is saying he enjoys playing Nussfjord, so would you like this one? I would say yes. This is more complex than Nussfjord, but... And I, and I do like Nussfjord, but I think this is... Nussfjord is not, is not a top 10 game for me. This is. Um, have I mentioned how much I love this game? I think I have. Might mention it again. Right, what are we going to do? I think I'm going to go here. I'm going to spend three workers. We're going to go here and we're going to trade. Since we have a canar, I'm going to trade. So I can basically buy any two items off this board for money. And some of them are actually free. The small ones are free. Um, yeah, and why would you spend two coins for that when it's only one space bigger? One, two, three, it's six. Yeah, you, why would you spend two coins for that? Because a coin you can use to cover a space up. That seems a bit silly. Why can't I buy the crown? I want to buy the crown. Um... So it's basically no coins gets you something that costs, uh, that takes up five spaces. Two coins gets you something that takes up seven spaces. So that's, that seems about right. Um, Shane has only got this and Glass Road. Yeah, I've got a lot of Rosenberg games, but this is, this is my favourite Rosenberg game. Okay, well, I quite like the idea of... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm going to spend five money. We're going to break into this ten. I'm going to get five change, and we're going to buy, we're going to trade with this goblet. We're going to give him five pieces of silver for this. Now, I don't know where I'm going to put this, but it is now mine. Yeah, I'll, I'll work out where that's going to go in a minute. That's one thing that I've traded for. Um... The other thing that I'm going to trade for is Oh, we could trade this. This is this is 4 and this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. Yeah, it's basically it's the money plus 5, isn't it? I'm going to trade for this as well. Have we worked out what this is yet? Don't forget to draw an occupation. Ah, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's the etiquette teacher. Okay. 
So yeah, I'm going to pay four coins for this thing that nobody's let me know what it is yet. I will look it up in a minute. Right, that is... I've got one worker left, so we're going to use... I kind of wanted to go whaling again in the last turn. So... Do we just go here and forge something else? Yeah, I think we do. We're going to go there to the fancy space. We're going to spend another ore and we're going to forge this cross. Or do we forge this frying pan? It looks like a pancake pan. Yeah, because that would, that would go nicely in here and get me a fish. Yeah, so that's going there. Right, okay. Oh, gosh. Monica's here. Hi, Monica. It's a brooch, John is saying. Is it? Okay. Yeah, probably is. Right, so income. So before we do income, we have this, this puzzle again, where I now can place all of these lovely things onto this board. So I can't cover up the six until this is covered over. Okay, but the green thing is going there. That is where the green thing is going because it's allowed to go there. Um, the blue thing, that can go down here. The runestone can go down here. So I am, I am now allowed to cover over the six. So I'm going to. There you go. Six is now covered over. Um, do we want to put anything else on here? In fact, can I cover the seven over? Oh, I don't think I can. Oh, we got all of these. Right, hang on a minute. Yeah, I could do all sorts of fancy stuff here, couldn't I? That could go there, for example. Okay, that's quite nice. Uh, and then this could go there. But I'm only allowed to cover over that seven. If I cover over those two spaces, let's just zoom in a minute. I'm only allowed to cover over that seven if I cover those two spaces and this space down here, which I can. So that's going to go in there. Okay, and then, in fact, I can, I'm almost covering the nine. And I think this is probably worth it. Yeah, so I'm going to put two coins down here to cover that up. I'm going to put a coin in there and the coin in there, and I know I can still use ore, but I'm going to save the ore for the last round. Then I can put that in there, and that in there. Okay, so I've covered over everything to the left and below the nine, so that's fine. Yep, yeah, I'm allowed to do that. That is it. That is my covering overness done. Animal breeding. I get another pig. What am I going to do with all these pigs? <laughs> I, I accidentally got one of them, and now I've got four. Oh, I didn't do income. Income is four, five, seventeen. There you go. Ten, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Loads of money. Right. Animal breeding we've done. Feast. Ah, I forgot about the feast. But we're all right. We've got plenty of stuff. Now you can't put two colours next to each other. So... Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to use a silver, aren't I? Yeah. Silver in there, and then that there, and then we're going to eat some peas. Uh, oh, how am I going to do this? Orange, red, orange, silver, orange. There you go. Uh, oh, Shane has given us loads of historical information. Excellent. Thank you very much. Benny's here as well. He's going to have to restart from the beginning. Yes, you are. Absolutely. Because he's been brilliant. Right. We're done with the feast. Bonuses. This is the last time we get bonuses. So we get some bedroll. Uh, we get some fish, which I am going to put on here before I forget. Uh, I get another runestone cowboy. Um, 
we get some more flax. I get some mead. I get some wood. I get some ore. He thinks I've got too many resources. Another runestone. Done that. Done that one. And I get some uh, whale oil. Done. That's my bonuses done. Update the mountain strips. So that comes off, that comes off, and I'm using this as the last one. This is a new strip that came with the uh, with the expansion, because it was always a bit weird in a four-player game that you had no mountain strip at the end of the game. So they've, they've put this extra one in, which is super nice. Right at the end. And we need a wood on there. Right. Off we go then. Final round of the game. We're back to blue. And it's all looking good. And I'm starting to wish I'd have taken another island. Because everything is pretty much covered over. I mean, I can. Limerick is still there with six money sitting on it. So that is a net minus 10 points when I take it. But if I can start covering stuff up, that's actually going to be positive points. Hmm. Okay, we'll see how we get on because I've got all of these pigs and I am not doing anything with these pigs and I kind of want to emigrate. But we have all of this stone. I'm not doing anything with this stone. That's the other option is I could build one of these. And you can put stone in them. And that's it's six points. Yeah, that's actually going to get me quite a few points, isn't it? Oof, so many choices. So many choices. Right, harvest. There is no harvest in the last round. Exploration, we don't do that. Weapon, we've drawn a bow. I think these were spent. Yeah, they were spent. Okay, right, actions. Here we go. So, what should we do? I was going to use the private chef, because the private chef is pretty cool. I think I'm going to go for an... Oh, oh. Right, whaling, another island. Uh, emigration. What are we going to do, people? We we have so many options, and I'm not sure what I want to do because I think I'm going to cover this up quite easily. I mean, I can't go crafting. I did a lot of the crafting and I did a lot of the trading. So, yeah, I've got a spare sword, a spare bow. I've got some of these. We need to lay a snare again. Yeah, we need to lay a snare because that's what I'm good at. So, first action, laying a snare. Here we go. See what we get. I've rolled a six. I'm going to roll again. Second roll. It's a seven. I'm going to roll again. That looks like an eight. It's kind of cocked, but that's an eight. Well, that's bad. That is, that is bad. Now, I could spend my two snares and six wood. So I'm going to. I, I don't have any other use for this wood now, really. So, I'm, wow. Crazy expensive. But I did it. And I get a fish. Which I'm going to be eating. And I get some fox pelts. Which... I'm going to struggle now to fit on here. So I'm probably going to put it there. Because I don't need that bonus. That's going to go there. Right, okay. Coal on the boats. You mean the ore on the boats? Yeah. No, I'm no, I'm not whaling. I'm 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 probably going to whale. In fact, I should have whaled first. Because actually, now that I've lost the wood, that's actually not that great now, is it? But I'm really tempted to go for another island. Let Let's go for Limerick. So Limerick is actually in the one column, and I can get it with any boat. So let's do that. Yeah, let, let's, let, let's go and take Limerick. So we don't need those. I'm going to get rid of those now because I'm not going to take those. I'm going to put Limerick here. I get the six coins that's on it. Okay, and we need to fill it. We need to fill it with stuff. So I think I won't put that there. <laughs> I think I'll put that there. 
okay because now I can start filling all of this with other stuff right how are we going to get other stuff um okay well there's lots of nice things here that shouldn't be there that should be there because uh, we can always use ore on these I do want to play this private chef because that gets me some good stuff so I need to play something in column four uh, and column four could be this which is the emigration but then we're not whaling but I think that's okay yeah, that's that's okay. We're gonna go. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna put four on this new space here. So because I've gone in full in column four, I'm gonna play the private chef. So as well as being an angler, an armed fighter, a canal builder, and a pri I'm now a private chef. I spend four coins, and I get two bits of cutlery, uh, some mead, and some of the where is it? Uh, this one. Okay, right. And then I'm going to get to do the action, which is I convert one of my whaling ships into a mini emigration. Okay. Uh, and then I spend coins equal to the current round number, which is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One change. In order to flip over uh, my canar to, to the side. And then put it up here. There you go. So we've done a couple of emigrations. It's extra points at the end of the game. And I only have four workers left. So suddenly, after me saying, oh, I'm going to go for all of this, I now don't have much left. We need to do some upgrades because I have lots of reds and oranges, which is completely useless. Um, and we need to start putting these on and we need to start because these are just these are points now all of this is points um so that can go there yeah that's allowed um yeah we need to convert these we need to upgrade them and i need to make sure i've got enough stuff to feed my people which I, I i do i've easily got enough stuff to feed my people so all of this can now be used to do some upgrades okay so you've got all of this spare and i need to upgrade it okay so upgrade spaces um three single upgrades Two workers. Probably, probably what we want. Oh, don't have enough workers. Piggies. Uh, can't put. Oh yeah, I've, I forgot. I've got piggies, which I need to also upgrade. So yeah, piggies can't go on limerick because they're not blue or they're not green. But you're right. I do need to remember that I can upgrade them. So. At what's the best number of upgrades I can get? I can get four followed by one. Which is five. Or I could do that, which is four, and still have a, a worker left. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here and do three upgrades. So the this one is going to be upgraded into... This one. That's one. Um, the pig, and then two pigs are going to get upgraded um, into the herbs. Yeah, right. Okay. There we go. Then I go on here, which is one of something, doesn't matter what, really doesn't, and another upgrade. And I'm going to convert the cabbage. No, 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 I'll just convert another pig. 
into another herb. Okay. And then as my last action, um, well, let's, let's have a look. Let's, let, let's put some of these on. Oh, how's it going? It's on the last round. Yeah, we're on the last round and I'm trying to not lose a billion points. Um, yeah, just by using these in the most efficient way possible. In fact, I don't need... Yeah, I'm not really that bothered about covering spaces up anymore. So that can go there. That's fine. That's, that's avoiding me those negative points. Um, I don't need this all. So I might as well just start putting these on here as well, because I don't need them. Um, that can go there. Right, that could go... Yeah, that can go there. I just need to cover up as many spaces as possible. Maybe it wasn't a good idea taking these herbs. I can't actually use them. So, yeah, this is this is tricky. I mean, I can I might as well cover up these bonus spaces. I do not need these bonus spaces anymore. These are doing nothing for me now. If you don't get any bonuses at the end. <clears throat> um, but I have this one and I, I don't think I can use this one because of the way that I've placed things. I mean, I could... No. No. So this is an upgrade I didn't need. I think I'm going to take that back and instead of doing that, I will upgrade this mead into whale oil, which seems super inefficient. And I've got loads of stuff left. We can have a proper feast. There you go. So yeah, I'm now just gonna cover up as many of these as I can to get as many points as I can. So that can go there, that can go there. Concentrated on the new island too much and in slack with this. That goes there and that goes there and that goes there. And there you go. So one thing I like to do is I like to cover up my complete island. There's very little point to actually using money for it because it's exactly the same. But I'm going to do exactly that because I just like covering it over as much as I can. So, am I going to be able to do it? No, I think I'm a bit short. I am a bit short. Now, I didn't need to put that there. I could have put that there, and I could have put that there, and at least that's that covered over. Can you use the money that you get at the end to cover up the final spaces? I think you can. Yeah, that's my question for the chat. I think you can. There is final income, but there isn't final bonuses. So yeah, you can. So we're doing income. So I get 18 for this because it's all completely covered over. I get four for this, so that's 22, 23, 24, 25. And it does say you don't need to record it. It, it. You're saying it works the same. It doesn't work the same because I've got some spaces that are a minus two. So, yeah. Interesting. I'm not sure if this is this is allowed because it uh, yeah, but I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the 22 money. Is it 22? No, 18, 22, 23, 25. It's 25 money. Yeah, I remember reading somewhere it says you don't you don't write it down. 
But if you're saying that I can, so then we do animal breeding. I've got a pig, so I get another pig. We do the feast, boom, and then we are done. So if what we're saying is true, I am allowed to cover over some of these minus two spaces. It's only two of them, but it would have only been two points in it. Oh no, there's another one there. In fact, yeah, just, just, be, just because I can, I'm gonna cover up that one and that one, and then I'm gonna split that 10 into smaller denominations and cover those spaces up. Uh, and then I'm gonna cover one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just gonna take that 10 off, give me four back, and we're gonna treat those as covered spaces. Okay, so these are all covered as well. Just so that I can say I don't have any negative points. There you go, right. Worker. Did it, did I in fact forget to place it? <laughs> Is that what we're saying? Do I have a worker left? Oops. Oh, okay. So uh, just to, just to save time, um, I'm going to put it there and emigrate with one of those and get another mini emigration. There you go. Okay. So yeah, I possibly could have done something better with that. But that's fine. That is fine. Right, we now need the score pad. Gosh, where is the score pad? So much stuff in this game. There's the score pad. What I don't have is a pen. Uh, right, here we go. Cool, played this game a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of things on here. Right, okay, so. Uh, phase three in the first or last round, does that mean you can't play silver in the last Yeah, I didn't think you could play silver in the last round. I'm going to just check that, but I, I didn't think you could. That did feel odd, what I've just done. But let me, let me just check. I know you can't place to get bonuses. If you have any sheds or stone houses, you can do that. Uh, score your points. Running out of components. Yeah, you don't get any bonus in the last round. I know that. Where is the thing about income? Uh, income. Not there. Yeah, where is it? Uh, Michael is saying you think you can play silver in the last round and you don't get silver income in the last round. Yeah, okay. I think we've done it right. I need a pen. I don't have a pen. Oh, brilliant. I've got plenty of dice around and I've got plenty of meeples, but I don't actually have a pen. Right, okay. Well, bear with us a minute. Uh, let, me, let me see what I can do. If, have I got a pen anywhere? My kingdom for a pen. I've got a too many bones trove chest. Nope, we're going to have to do it electronically. Right. Uh, so Michaeli is saying you get points income instead of silver income in the last round. Yeah, we'll look at that later on. Right, okay, so points. Somebody's going to add it up. Right, here we go. Ships. Yeah, if people just want to put this in the chat. Ships, I have uh, three. I have three points from ships. Right, next, emigrations. I have 32 points from emigrations. Okay, so 32 points from emigrations. Next is exploration boards. I have 20 points from exploration boards. Okay, next, sheds and houses. I have eight points from sheds and houses. I didn't get any of these. All of this stone is a complete waste. So eight points from sheds and houses. Sheep and cattle, which is now animals. I've got three points for animals. Occupations, I have uh, 
six, seven, eight, plus the four. So I have 12 points from occupations. Okay. Uh, silver, I have 12. Final income, we, we actually took as money. So forget that. Uh, and that is my positive sub subtotal. And then negatives, nothing, 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 no negatives. So that is my final score. So if somebody wants to add it up while I double check the rules again, where, where is the rules where it says you don't need to take your income in the last round? Because I remember reading that and I don't know where it is. But yeah, the question is, can you place silver after you have gained it? Now, normally in the base game, it doesn't matter. But in the expansion, there are some minus two spaces on the boards, uh, which means it does matter. So I scored 90. That's not a very good score, is it? That isn't a very good score. And if, if I wasn't allowed to do what I did, then it would be 88. Um, yeah, so 90 is not a very good score. But as I say, I'm not, I'm a bit rusty at this game. Um, last time I played it, I scored 124, according to this. Yeah, but it was brilliant. Um, okay, so Tom is confirming, and I believe, Tom, you can definitely take it as income and place it. Okay, so yeah, 90. Um, yeah, a low score compared to uh, what I've scored previously, which is normally around, oh, I scored 65 here, apparently. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really happy with that because the game is fantastic. And as I say, if, if that only took me an hour, uh, I, would be, I would be resetting and I would be playing it again. However, it is 10 to 5. Uh, and we have plans later on. Um, but this has, been, this has been fantastic. So, as mentioned at the start, uh, this video is only made possible through the support of my Patreon campaign. If you have been watching this video and you don't support me on Patreon, but you thought you might, then please feel free to do so. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. A huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, because without, without your support, uh, this wouldn't be possible. And this has been brilliant. Uh, I'm really, really happy because this is a fantastic game. And I would definitely happily play this every day of the week, including Tuesdays. Um, yeah, it's been really, really good. The Norwegian's expansion, I think, makes it a better game. I think I'm going to play with a, a, a variant for the weapons next time, just so that you're not getting just one random card. Uh, maybe just a choice of two. I don't know. Just just feels a little bit a little bit better. And maybe a choice of occupation as well. Um, thank you very much for, to everybody in the chat for keeping me honest. Uh, rules wise and reminding me of those couple of things that I missed and yeah that's everything that's it for me for today I am not doing any streams this evening uh, like I have done the other two nights however since Tom is in the chat uh, if you are interested in a live playthrough play along of Quacks of Quedlinburg Tom's doing that tonight on his Slicker Drift channel so it's one of those where Tom's going to be playing the game and you can play along tonight so yeah head on over to YouTube uh, dot com slash slicker drips uh, if you're interested in that that will be happening tonight and i will be back tomorrow evening with agamonia so yeah tomorrow evening eight o'clock uk time myself uh, and andy lewis from polyhedron collider we're going to be playing through the third and final tutorial mission for agamonia that's tomorrow night other than that yeah i'll say goodbye for now thank you very much for watching take care and i will see you all soon Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.